Um, this is Triad Media Presents, and I'm Frank Beecham. This is a series of programs featuring people in the arts and entertainment who are dealing with the temporary lack of live performance venue, a major issue for many people. Our guest on this first show is Rick Newman, founder of Catch a Rising Star, a major chain of comedy clubs. He has mentored a who's who of top comedians over the years. Uh, Rick managed Pat Benatar and Rodney Crowell, both Grammy-winning artists. He's produced comedy specials for all the TV networks. And I welcome Rick to the show. Though I'm in New York, Rick is in L.A., in Hollywood. And um, I, I just want to start by asking you how life is, is out there and how are you doing? I'm actually doing pretty good, thank you. Uh, Self-quarantine, self of course. Um, but it gave me an opportunity, the pandemic, to dust off some old projects, get in touch with some colleagues. And for the last two and a half months, we've been developing two programs in particular that, uh, uh, that we all liked, and uh, it's keeping us all busy. You know, the interesting part is I'm not alone. We're all in the same boat, so to speak, right now. So, uh, all in all, I'm doing okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Since you came from the, the um, live performance side of this business uh, and have mentored a lot of major people, I'm, I know that a lot of artists now are lamenting their future uh, over what they're going to do about not having the ability to perform live. And, and, and I just wonder, what do you think the changes are going to be uh, when, uh, you know, this, uh, this thing uh, comes down? I mean, how, are, how do you see this shaping up? Well, I think it, the audience, the size of the audience is going to be different than what it was, no matter what the venue was. Right. So, um, they're going to have to work out some kind of a seating where there's a safe distance between you and the stranger. And it's definitely going to, uh, it's definitely going to affect ticket sales. However, there will be some kind of back to normalcy in live performance. When that's going to happen depends upon what happens with the pandemic and whether or not uh, vaccine or um, or uh, other rules and regulations that are going to be put into place uh, go into effect. So do you see, um, the, let's say, the live theater audience or, or the, the live performance artist, do they need to go to video uh, as an interim and can they easily make that transition? Well, you know, creative people always found a way to be uh, original. And, and now is the time. The internet is your friend. And there is so many places where you can, you can project yourself, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Zoom, Vimeo. Um, you can develop an audience. You can get yourself out there. I think Right now, you just have to think about how you can put yourself online and project your talent uh, to the public. Uh, we've been through this before. I think the last pandemic was uh, 1918. 100 uh, years ago. I wasn't here. You, were you around? I wasn't either, but I'm just wondering if, uh, if there's a history of how what people did then, because I'm sure that many of them were closed at that time. Uh, I don't know much about that, but it's an interesting uh, thing. I wonder if there are any, uh, any examples. Well, I think, you know, you certainly can't compare 100 years ago to now, because no, with can't. social media and, and the internet, you can reach more people than even performing live. Uh, it's quite interesting whether you're a comedian, a musician, an actor, 
You know, there are so many different ways. Actors, a lot of actors are getting a little community together and they do broadcasting of different plays. And it's a Zoom call with maybe 10 people on the call. Sometimes it's two or three people. They each take a part and they read a script. And uh, that's one way. Another way with YouTube, artists have been putting themselves out there, I mean, and doing very well and been successful, whether it's someone like uh, Justin Bieber or um, a, a new artist that can expose themselves uh, to a, an audience. But there, there are ways now that certainly weren't around 100 years ago that you, you can be creative and you can get out there and, and present yourself. Right. Well, it's interesting. We went through a period of, of in the motion picture industry from silent films to talkies. And what it did was it transformed the artistry. People that were great at the silent films didn't do so well as the talkies, and it was vice versa. Do you see now, you work with a lot of live people, do you see them easily transform? Lading the television or video, or do you think it's going to be? You know, it's interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine who is very involved with the New York Comedy Festival and kind of runs it. And, uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, we were chatting about online YouTube stars, and what he said is. Sometimes someone can become a star on YouTube and they get up in front of a live audience and they just can't deliver it because they're not used to performing in front of a live audience. So it depends upon the talent. It depends upon what you do. And it depends upon um, how you present yourself. If you want to be a, a, a YouTube or an Instagram star or, um, or, or, present yourself in a way where you do a Zoom call with other comedians, and this is happening regularly, um, and, and you do get that immediate reaction from your other comedians that are on that Zoom call. Uh, but you have to figure out a way that you can do it and reach the people, and there's plenty of ways that you can, in fact, do that. And I, it, so it sounds like what you're really saying is the artist today is going to have to reinvent themselves. Totally. For you this uh, new future, or, or you just, or they'll fizzle out. You know, well, you have to, they have to reinvent themselves for a period of time uh, until we see what's going to happen with uh, this uh, pandemic. But yeah, I mean, you have to, you have to reinvent yourself for, for the internet. And I think it, 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 I, I can't stress enough. There's so many things out there that you, you can do. There's comedy competitions. There are, uh, there are auditions, whether it's uh, sending in an audition tape for America's Got Talent or uh, uh, American Idol, they all accept online auditions and, and you've got to pursue everything as a performer. So uh, in doing this, uh, do you see that, uh, that a lot of people are going to be dropped by the wayside? You, you've got artists now, let's say, that are they're musicians, and they perform on, from their living room, and they do it maybe once a week. But that's got to fizzle out, isn't it? It's not high production value, and you would think at a certain point, people will get tired of it. Well, it's interesting, because it, it gets better and better. Look at the late-night talk shows. They started out not having an audience. Everyone is interviewing from their home, and... It started out, it was a little clumsy, and it got better as it went on. It, it, uh, right. It's pretty good now, as a matter of fact. And I think that's going to happen with 
regular performers as well, whether it's a comedian or a musician, uh, the technology affords itself that it can be better than it was if you keep doing it. The, uh, the comedy club, as you knew it, um, do you see that business in a, in a live venue coming back in, say, the next two or three years? In, in, in the next two or three years? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, or at least until a vaccine comes out. I think, it, it, again, it, uh, again, it depends upon uh, what the prognosis is with this pandemic. Because if that vaccine happens, as, as they're saying, as early as next year, and it really is effective, then it's going to come back sooner. In the interim, comedy clubs are going to suffer, and they are suffering, because they, they're generally not too big to begin with. And, you know, if you cut down the size of an audience, you still have the same overhead uh, right. as, as a club owner. And if you're only allowed 25 to 35 percent of an audience that you can fill, I don't know how many places can endure that and stay in business. So, right. There's a lot to be taken into consideration for all of that. You are also a partner in the Triad Theater. And um, we, we are not in an opening phase yet of this. But uh, I know that you have, you have done a social distancing so that people can sit further apart in a live venue. And also there is video capability, live streaming and all. Do you feel that that is going to be um, a good way for uh, audiences to, to come back in some form, uh, or do you think it's still very risky? Uh, no, I think it's something, as a matter of fact, at the triad, uh, what we're going to do is we're converting it into not just a theater, but a soundstage so that we can broadcast live streaming events out of there or tape events that could be broadcast later. But it, we had to reinvent ourselves as well. Now, well, my partner, Peter Martin, who built the triad and built a beautiful theater, uh, as, as you know, um, he already has put in banquettes and cut our capacity in half of what it was before. So it's spaced out where even if we're doing a live performance with an audience, everyone's going to have safe seating distances right. between tables. But um, we are making a change. We had to reinvent the club and the theater, and that's what we're doing. And what kinds of acts do you think will come there uh, under this reinvention? Well, in the past, uh, we have done such things. We have Celebrity Autobiography, which has been running there for 10 years. We, I don't know if you know about it, but it's oh, yeah, I'm saying, yes. different celebrities that read other celebrities' autobiographies. Very funny. That's a show that we would broadcast. Um, uh, we do a writer's seminar, a New York comedy writer's seminar, uh, hosted by Alan Zweidel. We've done that several times. Right. And we intend to get back into that type of programming. Uh, we do a lot of music. Johnny Rausch and, uh, uh, and his connection with musicians. Uh, every other week, we do a... Uh, a live jam session with the top musicians in New York. And, uh, and that's just an example of some of the things that we will be doing out of there. We also do things like Joy Behar and Susie Essman have interviewed each other. Mario Cantone and Susie Essman have interviewed each other. So there's different kinds of programming that will work on, on, on the internet and live streaming that we intend to do. Right, right. So, uh, do you do you see these will all be pay per view events so that 
people at home. I mean, you won't have a, a large enough audience to make them commercially viable in the theater. So will you make them free or will you make them pay-per-view or how would you do that? The, the, look, the only way we can stay in business is to charge a minimum amount of money. And I say minimum, uh, hypothetically, $5 uh, uh, you know, a broadcast just to cover the cost of opening the theater. Uh, uh, if there's some money that we can give to the talent, that's exactly what we would like to do as well. And we would partner with the talent on some of the projects that they may bring us for it to possibly go on to bigger and better things. And, you know, there's a lot of internet shows that began as just small programming and went on to become television shows. Right, right. So beyond um, the triad, you're working on television yourself. You're developing new shows. How do you see production coming back? Um, let's say you got a show. How do you produce it right now? I, I know that there are some talks about social distancing with crews and all, but how do you do a love scene or something where people have to work close together? I think they'd have to go through uh, a doctor's examination first. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of kidding, but um, look, it's, it, it's got to be very carefully done so that the actors and the crew are protected. And whether it means making sure that they come in with a clean bill of health and tested negative for uh, coronavirus, um, or taking their temperature day of when they've got to do a scene. But I think a lot of the rules and regulations are going to be spelled out for us and what has to be followed. Right, right. And so we don't really know yet when this is going to come back uh, because I know you're spiking, you know, in, in, in California right now. So, yeah, uh, it, it's an interesting situation. Uh, do you know when pictures are, are, are pictures for shows and all being done by uh, you know, uh, Zoom and Skype and these kind of things, or are they in person? Well, at this point, you know, it's really done probably uh, with a, a producer and uh, a few network executives listening to the pitch over the phone. Uh, I don't think anyone is back in the office uh, on full schedule and taking pictures yet. Um, so they're going to have to be done, whether it's on phone, on Zoom, uh, on Facebook. Uh, uh, it, it has to be done differently than in person. Yeah. Orson Welles once said, the great, greatest enemy of art is the absence of limitation." Well, we certainly have a lot of limitations now. And do you see um, this changing fairly soon in the sense that we are really going to have to see people do deep in reinvention and, and really think differently than the way they ever have before? Uh, I would think that it's going to be tough for a lot of performers. It is, in fact, going to be tough for a lot of performers. But as I started out by saying, you know, creativity has a way of finding that lane that will work for you. And, and performers are just going to have to dig deep into themselves, be original as you have to be anyhow, and figure out a new way to present yourself. But again, to me, it comes back to being on the internet and being on the web. Uh, it's, it's right now, it's the way that you can reach people. And I was on a Zoom um, two weeks ago with a network executive that was a guest speaker. And he was saying, you know, there's a big thirst for creativity and, and projects. There's, there's no end in sight. On the internet, that is, and and there's a a, a big demand, and there's no there's no limit on how much product you can put out there. And it, it's it's open. 
So it's a, it's a bit of a game changer, I would think. And also, we're going to see people that are going to adapt to this new format and become stars in, in, in what is available to them. Yes. The case. Yes. That is going to happen. And, and there will be stars that are born out of uh, this pandemic and, and figured out a way to get to the public. Look, talent, I believe, wins out. You know, uh, always does. Uh, you've got to make sure that your material is good, and you've got to remember that it's going to be out there forever. So anything you're posting, be sure of what you're doing, because it's not going to go away. Right. That being said, you should do it. All artists should do it. Right. Uh, I know you're working on some TV projects. Is there anything you can share about what's uh, coming? And also, I think that there was a show down at the Triad coming um, on the network. Well, we're, we're, we're working on uh, a show. I can't tell too much about it because we don't want the idea out there. But right now, the working title is Two Drink Minimum. And it's a show that actually we have presented. We got notes back from networks. Um, it's something that kind of all came out of the pandemic. And, uh, and now we're in the process of rewriting. And we're going to be presenting it again. And uh, it, it's a show that will very much be a part of uh, the triad. Right, right. And I think you, uh, there was a taping at the Triad for a, a show that's coming on July 11th? Yes, there's a, a, a show that's going to be on CBS, NBC, Fox, and ABC simultaneously on June 11th. It's called Dear New York. There <laughs> are Dear New York, and it's a love letter to New York with all the different arts. It's uh, music comedy, theater, and dance. And the triad was chosen as one of the locations, uh, one of the four locations, a uh, triad for theater, uh, Gotham Comedy Club for comedy, uh, the Blue Note for jazz and music. There was a fourth location that I don't recall the name of, but, but mm. we're very happy to be a part of that. And. Uh, and, and it was seven o'clock Saturday, July 11th. July, right? You you mean next month? Next month. Right, right. Yeah, great, right, right. So, um, we are just about finished, but I wanted to find out if you have any other thoughts, especially now with we are looking at where an artist can find the next thing, and you're basically saying they are going to have to just think their way out of it and come up with something that is uh, incredibly creative and event invented. And it's always been that way. I mean, I, whenever you have to meet the challenges of the time. Uh, and well, you know, it's the old saying, wherever there's a problem, there is a solution. But um, I think it's important. Again, I can't stress it enough that all talent, Search the internet because there are grants, even for new artists, even for beginning artists, whether you're uh, an artist that paints, whether you're uh, a comedian, whether you're an actor, whether you're a dancer, there are various grants that are out there for talent to sign on to and get the possibility of getting X amount of dollars for whatever project they're working on. Right, so, right can't stress that enough it's it's the way right now that you have to go right right well rick thank you very much for being on this show and uh you, really been nice speaking with you and the best of luck with your projects and in the future thank but, you very much uh, you okay. take care now okay All right. you take Bye. care too frank Bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Mm.